Okay, class, so today's piece is on Logan, um, old man Logan, uh, from the movie named Logan, uh, which is Wolverine, uh, from the Wolverine franchise, X-Men franchise, uh, this is going over the, this is his final movie, the final movie that Hugh Jackman did as Wolverine, as Logan, and I saw this movie and, and, and immediately it was just one of those, it was a fun movie, there's so much structure, so much uh, heartbreak, so much angst in the in this movie, and, and I remember I read an article that he wished that when he started playing the character that he thought of playing the character this way 17 years ago, and, and I agree with him, this is the best performance of uh, this character. So what I've done here on this one, again, I, I have a tile that I made prior, this fired it, and then I'm using various slips and a couple glazes to add together to create this nice black and white motif. Uh, across the tile and I'm using uh, several brushes to cut, to do that line work with. Now for this piece here, uh, specifically one of the things I wanted to have a big strong uh, characteristic with is as you're watching the movie, the movie itself takes place in the near future, kind of an apocalyptic, um, still you can tell it's earth and it's it, it's been war torn, there's just devastation about it that nothing is happy in this entire movie the whole movie is is just depressing uh but it is just a fabulous fabulous film uh there's just so much um drama and depth in the characters at this point that you, you feel something there and because of that i wanted to have this um kind of an old west style to it where you have this uh the cream color of the clay the chocolate browns or the the various levels of brown from the pigments that i'm using that I, so it looked like an old timey sepia tone photograph that you'd see from an old west uh, from like the 1800s when the, you, you have to stand there for five ten minutes as they took your picture. I wanted that same kind of air to this piece as well because um, in the picture that I'm using that I'm, I'm working off of there was a, some pinks and blues it had a very um, like Miami fluorescent light kind of feel to it and I didn't want to have that in the image I really want to keep, keep to that old west the the true just the hardship of the overall image um, and for this one I'm actually using a lot more of the slip and a lot more of the uh, the raw umber to fill in the gradient levels of the piece And using all those those tones are going to give me a lot more uh, glaze to work with. I'm going to have to move around with just water, so I'm actually taking them, scrubbing in large sections. So as you see, uh, it, it looks wet for a second. I'm just using that water. I'm, again, I'm flooding those pieces with water to push the chemicals around to create stronger lines and higher levels of definition in the piece. And it, that's to create more starkness and contrast in the overall image. So there's a um, the line quality has changed. The one thing that I will say this is, and this was one of the things that you notice after it comes out of the kiln, uh, the line that's right around the collar, this, it's a really thick and dense line that I applied with uh, the squirt bottle. I had the glaze in there and I'm putting the squirt bottle down. I don't like that line at all. It's so, like looking at it now and looking at the piece, um, I wish I didn't do that. So be mindful of how you guys are putting down the chemicals and how in what order just because sometimes you'll add something that you feel shouldn't have been there later on down the road. So doing hair with, with glaze is actually really difficult and you do have to think about each individual hair. Uh, and I know that in painting you can kind of fan your brush out and when you do one stroke, the, the, the fanning of the brush itself gives it that. It, it leads itself to have more of a structure to a hair quality because you have all these individual brushes. With a glaze, you have to remember that when it goes in the kiln, the chemicals in there, there's a, there's a flux component in gloss glazes that create that glass-like texture. And I didn't want to have, um, when that goes, when it reaches a certain temperature, all that glass, those glass components melt and they kind of fuse together. So I want to create enough definition through line and through the way that I was applying the line, not just having a muddy texture down. So, the, uh, so on the beard there, having those 
um, almost like polka dotty patterns where I'm like sta stabbing uh, different glazes down there gives it that individual hair quality without actually having to draw individual hairs. Uh